Howdy partners, this is Western author Mark Redmond back with another installment of my first chapter series. Um, in this segment we're going to look at the first chapter of the second book in my Bounty Hunter series, um, Bounty Hunter Nate Landry, Family Fury. Um, this one picks up after the, the first book in the series, this this time you'll get to meet Wolf uh, in the first chapter. Uh, Nate and Wolf are best friends. They've come through the Civil War together. They grew up together. And now after the war, uh, they've become bounty hunters together. And uh, they're, in this book, they're after, as the title would indicate, uh, family members. Uh, let me read the first chapter to you. And if you enjoy it, you can pick up the book at either Amazon.com or my website, Mark Redmond, um, MarkLRedmond.com. You can order them there. If you order a, a copy from my website, I'd be happy to autograph it for you. Uh, if you enjoy it, uh, let me know. Uh, leave me a nice review on uh, Facebook, BookBub. Um, Goodreads, Amazon, any place you have social media, uh, I can use uh, a, a good word from you. Uh, here's chapter one of Bounty Hunter Nate Landry, Family Fury. Fury. Did you ever whack a hornet's nest with a stick? Wolf asked. No, I said. But I've always wanted to, ever since we were boys. Do you know where we can find one? Wolf and I were seated across from each other at a table in a small cantina. We had finished our breakfast of tortillas, beans, beef, and eggs. We were drinking coffee and looking at wanted posters. Wolf had just finished reading the paper I had handed him, and he slid it across the table to me. Imagine whacking a giant hornet's nest with a stick, he said. Instead of a swarm of angry hornets trying to sting you, picture a gang of angry outlaws trying to shoot you. That's what'll happen if we go after Luke Womack. Except they'd be trying to shoot us instead of just me. I drank, I, I drank some more coffee. It was hot and strong. Why do you think I'm concerned? Wolf asked. Luke isn't riding with his brothers, I said. No, Wolf said. He's not. But they'll find out if we capture or kill him, I said. Yes, Wolf said. They will. He finished his coffee and set his tin cup on the table. The young girl who had brought us our food appeared with a large coffee pot and refilled both our cups. We thanked her. Then you think they'll be angry and they'll want to shoot us? I asked. Shoot us dead, Wolf said. You want to go after Luke anyway? I asked. Let's finish our coffee first, Wolf said. As Wolf and I drank our coffee, I read through the paper on Luke Womack again. He and two sidekicks were wanted, dead or alive, for three bank robberies, and four stagecoach robberies, one of which involved a killing, all committed in the Arizona Territory. The reward for Luke was $400. His sidekicks were worth $100 each. The rewards might increase depending on what new trouble Luke and his boys had caused by the time we caught up with them. Wolf and I finished our coffee, paid for our meal, and walked into the dusty street. Max stood at the hitching rail between Wolf's horse and our pack mule. We mounted our horses, and, leading the mule, I followed Wolf up and across the street to the mercantile. About an hour later, we rode west out of town. I still led the pack mule, but now it was loaded with a two-week supply of beans, coffee, jerked beef, and hardtack, as well as extra ammunition and two extra canteens. We had filled the canteens, and we had also tied our frying pan and coffee pot to the pack saddle. 
The rest of our supplies we had packed in our saddlebags. I reckon we can reach Fort McDowell in two days, I said. Maybe someone there will know where Womack has been most recently. And if we don't learn anything there, said Wolf, we can ride three more days to Wickenburg and see if he's still in town. If the Womack, and if Womack and his boys haven't spent all the money from their most recent robbery, I said, we might catch them in Wickenburg. And when we catch them, Wolf asked, we'll give them the same choice everybody else gets, I said. We either take them to prison in Yuma, or we bury them in Wickenburg's Boot Hill. Either way, Luke should be the only Walmack we'll need to hunt, Wolf said. If we take Luke alive, some or all of the other four Walmacks will come hunting us between Wickenburg and Yuma. I'd pray they didn't catch up with us until after we delivered Luke to prison. Even then, I said, we'd be out in the open, and they could hit us whenever they wanted to. We'd be better off throwing Luke in the local jail and then choosing our ground for defense somewhere around Wickenburg or wherever we find Luke. Then, once we find the right place, we could wait for them to come after us, but we'd make sure they could only attack us from the front. They might all come at the same time, Wolf said. Two of us could be going up against a dozen or more of them, depending on how many men are riding with each brother. That does sound like a giant hornet's nest to me. It's not too late to throw down the stick and walk away, I said. Wolf shook his head. This hornet's nest needs to come down, he said. Let's get a big stick and whack it hard. One of the things that let Wolf and me work together was a similar set of values which had guided our actions for as far back as either of us could remember. We'd never discussed these values. We'd probably never even mentioned them. They had just become a part of us while we were busy growing up, fighting in the war, and hunting desperados. I reckoned that what mattered most about those values was that Wolf and I both had them. As we rode in silence toward Fort McDowell, I knew why Wolf had agreed to hunt Luke Womack and his brothers with me. Whenever I looked through wanted posters to decide who needed to be stopped next, my values determined my decision. While most bounty hunters select their quarry based on the size of the reward offered or the potential for an easy capture, I looked at the list of laws each man had broken. If the outlaw was wanted for stealing horses, one outlaw and another outlaw wanted for murder, I chose to pursue the murder regardless of how much the reward was. I knew that if I had chosen to hunt Luke Womack just for the reward, I would have been hunting him without wolf. I reckon part of those values concerned how Wolf and I thought about money. When I was a boy, I had heard a circuit-riding preacher say that money is the root of all evil. Later that day, while we were eating dinner, my pa had quoted the verse from the Bible that says, The love of money is the root of all evil. Pa had explained that money is a tool, like a, a plow, a shovel, or a rifle. A man needs money to provide for himself and his family. Money isn't good or evil any more than a gun or a shovel is. The Bible wasn't condemning money, but the love of money as the root of all evil. Wolf and I both needed to have money in order to live. We were both good at tracking, and we were both good with our guns. The Arizona Territory had too many outlaws, and not enough lawmen. People would pay men like Wolf and me to bring some of the outlaws to justice. I reckon the job was a good fit for us. Luke Womack may be the best of that sorry family, Wolf said. He is, I said. We'd been watching in all directions as we rode. Wolf turned toward me and asked, Then why go after him first? In fact, why go after him at all? 
There are other hombres a lot worse than Luke that need to be caught. Indeed there are, I said, and Luke's four brothers are some of the worst. We have posters on all five of the Walmacks. They're scattered all over. Two of them are outside Arizona Territory, or that's where uh, they were last seen. Luke looked the easiest, like the easiest Walmack to find, Wolf said. He did. And you'd like to corral the entire clan? Wolf asked. To the last man, I said. But you don't want to chase the other four Walmacks all over the Arizona Territory, Wolf said. Or Texas or New Mexico, I said. Arizona Territory, Texas or New Mexico, Wolf said. I reckon I'd rather not ride all those miles either. Not if we can get them to come to us, I said. No wonder I'm so proud to ride with the great Nate Landry, Wolf said. I'm obliged for your company, partner, I said. The day had been hot with only a slight breeze, but when we reached the Rio Salinas, we found enough water to refill our nearly empty canteens and to let our horses and pack mule drink. Wolf and I rinsed the dust from our faces with the warm water and then let the horses wade across the shallow flow. We rode without speaking until the sun had almost set. The land was flat in every direction, but we found an old buffalo wallow and dismounted. We stripped the saddles from our horses, rubbed them down, and fed them a little of the grain that we had brought. Then we hobbled them and turned them loose to hunt for anything else they considered edible. Over a small fire I cooked beans and made coffee. Wolf took some jerky and some hardtack from one of his saddlebags. He took tin plates, tin cups, and two spoons from one of our packs and sat cross-legged near the fire. We divided the beans, hardtack, and jerky, and Wolf filled the cups with coffee. When Wolf and I sat by our fire, we always sat across from each other so that we could see in every direction, watching for anything or anyone that might approach us. Neither of us ever looked directly at the fire. Too many men had died because looking at the fire had blinded them just long enough for an enemy to strike. We ate in silence. The fire had burned into a few glowing embers by the time I poured the last of the coffee into our cups. What do we know about the other four, Walmax? Wolf asked. Luke is the middle brother, I said. Matt and Mark are the older. John and Roman are the younger. Please don't tell me they have sisters named Acts and Corinthians, Wolf said. Their father was a circuit-riding preacher, I said. He had five sons, but no daughters. What I know about the brothers comes from wanted posters and second-hand information I've picked up over the last few months. I ate my last spoonful of beans and took a drink of coffee. Matthew is a gambler and something of a ladies' man. Is he any good at gambling? Wolf asked. He's been making a living at it for ten years, I said. He's been accused of cheating at least three times. I bit off a piece of jerky and chewed it. Three dead men? Wolf asked. I nodded. Fair fights? Wolf asked. I nodded again. I finished chewing the jerky and washed it down with a swallow of coffee. Then what's he wanted for? Wolf asked. He took up with a woman for a spell last year, I said. One day while Matthew was playing cards in Prescott, his woman went to the bar to get him a drink. A local man insulted her somehow, and when he returned, when he refused to apologize, Matthew shot him down. Trouble is, the man wasn't carrying a gun. What about Mark? Wolf asked. He hacked a chunk of hardtack in two into two pieces 
with his knife and put the smaller piece into his mouth. From what I've heard, Mark is a lone wolf, I said. He rides alone because he doesn't like other people. He hunted buffalo for a while, and he earned a reputation for being deadly with his rifle. He was a sniper during the war. For the last three years, he's been hunting bounty, mostly around New Mexico. The moon had risen, chasing away some of the darkness. Wolf spread his bedroll, and he stretched out, facing me, resting his head on one elbow. Why is he wanted? he asked. Well, he uses his rifle to hunt wanted men, I said, but I reckon he hasn't been too particular about confirming a man's identity before he pulls the trigger. He's killed men who weren't wanted? Wolf asked. Two homesteaders, a drifter, and a tinker, I said. Those are the ones that have been confirmed. You were right about Luke, Wolf said. So far, he's the best of the bunch. What do you know about John? John Womack rides with another hombre, Ben McKinley, mostly in Texas, I said. They're rustlers, but they've robbed a couple of banks, too. From what I've heard, John is a low-down thief, but McKinley is a mean, murdering backshooter who kills for pleasure. No one seems to be able to keep up with the number of, of bodies he's left behind. I've heard of McKinley, Wolf said. He kills with, out without provocation. Some folks reckon he's crazy. Crazy or not, I said. McKinley is dangerous. That leaves Roman, Wolf said. What about him? He's not much more than a boy, I said, but he's lightning fast with his gun, and he's on the prod, looking to build a reputation. He fights his enemies face to face. Roman has killed a dozen men, but only three or four of those men have been gunmen. The rest have been farm boys, store clerks, or cowboys that he's crowded into fighting. Most of them never had a chance. Some of them didn't even draw. They just moved at the wrong time because they were afraid. What he's done is wrong, Wolf said. But I don't see the cause for a poster on Roman. You will, I said. Six or seven months ago, two cowboys jumped Roman and beat him senseless on the main street of their town. They left him lying in the street and walked away. Before they got out of pistol range, Roman raised up and called to them. When they turned to face him, he emptied one of his six guns at them. The beating had been severe enough that it affected his aim. He wounded one of the cowboys, but missed the other. A stray bullet, um, a stray bullet from Roman's second six-gun hit a woman who had just walked out of a dry goods store and killed her. His second six-gun still had ammunition in it, so somehow he escaped from town. His poster says he can brought in, be brought in dead or alive. Wolf was quiet for several minutes, but I could see from the fading glow of the fire that he was still leaning on one elbow. I stretched out on my back and looked at the stars. I was nearly asleep when he spoke. Five wanted brothers, and no one has captured or killed any of them, Wolf said. Then we pick up the st stick and whack the hornet's nest. We must be very brave, Mr. Landry. Or, I said, maybe we're crazy like Ben McKinley. And that's chapter one.
of Family Fury, the second in the Nate Landry Bounty Hunter series. Again, if you enjoyed that, you can find the books on Amazon.com or at MarkLRedman.com, my website. Um, I'd be happy to autograph any copies that you order from the website. Um, I hope you will enjoy what I've what I've written. Um, I don't write for me. Uh, I write for you. Uh, I write stories that you'll enjoy. Stories that'll teach you about the old west. I try to keep everything as factual as I can so that you are learning about the Old West and some of the people that were there. Um, a lot of people were violent, but there were a lot of people just like people today um, who lived by their wits instead of by uh, force. That's it for this time. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, I'll be back with Five for the Trail.